Thank you so much for joining us today. So Krista, what are the symptoms that we should look out for when it comes to burnout? So when we're talking about burnout, it's really a prolonged response to like a chronic exposure to interpersonal or emotional stress that somebody would be encountering in their job. Um, and we kind of think about it broadly in terms of three dimensions. So you're going to be noticing first piece, exhaustion. People start to report that they're just feeling overly exhausted all the time. Um, the second one is an increase in cynicism. So your attitude starts to really shift mm -hmm. tremendously. And then the third one is a decreased or diminished sense of, of professional and personal efficacy. Just not really feeling like you can mm -hmm. get your job done, get things done overall. So Holly, what do we do once we've recognized that these three things are, one of them are popping up in our, our lives? Well, absolutely. I think one of the things that we want to consider is maybe talking to somebody about it. And that mm -hmm. doesn't have to be a professional necessarily at first. It can be talking to a coworker, a friend, or something at the workplace that we can potentially do to impact um, these feelings that we're having. Or we can find ways to shift, like if we're feeling more emotionally exhausted, maybe we want to find more ways to create energy. Or if we're having that um, reduced sense of accomplishment, maybe ways to increase our self-efficacy. Uh, or if we're feeling like we're you know, having more sense of like depersonalization and things like that, becoming more involved. So instead of doing things that cause burnout, we want to shift it to things that are going to make us feel more engaged. Because often burnout happens when we have a shift in our sense of our resources over our demands. So if we can increase our resources or give us more control or any sense of like uh, choice or having more sense of our value match and our sense of community, that can really um, help us and we can start doing things to remedy this situation. And I can't imagine it's good, but what happens if we don't treat the burnout? So it, there's things that can happen on an organizational level. There can be like more absenteeism. We can be t um, showing up late for work. We might be misusing our breaks, spending more time on social media, for example. Or we might be experiencing like more of our common colds, those type of illnesses. Oh. Or mm -hmm. like chronic burnout that's happening for a long time could lead to like cardiovascular disease, hypertension, wow. cancer, that sort of thing, similar to our stress response. Right. Or on an emotional level, we can have increased rates of depression, anxiety, substance abuse, suicide, for example. And that can lead to people having to take like antidepressants or anti-anxiety meds. Or we have more interpersonal effects that can happen because there's a spillover effect into our lives. Yeah. So we can have increased like irritability, uh, we're more cynical, frustrated, anger, and obviously that's going to cause tension within the workplace, within our uh, relationships with our spouses, kids, that sort of thing. So there is a lot of implications that can happen from burnout. And so, Krista, you've been looking into interventions. Mm -hmm. You're doing your dissertation on that. Uh, so what have you found when it comes to interventions for burnout? We know, like, the most recent statistic in sort of economically developed nations, one in four, roughly, workers is wow. presenting with symptoms of burnout. And so there are interventions, there are psychological strategies um, that are effective. But when we're looking at kind of going toward the professional side of things, um, we would always recommend evidence-based practice. So looking at things like cognitive behavioral therapy, also looking at things that might bolster someone's um, kind of value match between the job that they're doing and their own personal set of values, that's going to be effective. And then uh, making sure that there's a felt sense of community around somebody. And then when we talk about um, intervention level, sometimes that means engaging and, and talking with someone about maybe this isn't the, the mm -hmm. occupation for you. Maybe this is too far of a mismatch and you've got to look at, at doing things different. That's an intervention too. And Holly, do you have anything to add about what people can do to kind of banish yeah. burnout? With respect to COVID, there's been an enmeshment between our work and our home life. So finding separate spaces for work and for home. So if you're working, then work in your home office, for example. Don't be working at your kitchen table or in the bedroom, for example. Mm -hmm. As similarly with our time, if you're having your work time, you know, schedule your work time accordingly and then when it's done work, then that's time to come turn off and engage with your family or whatever that might look like. Mm -hmm. uh, or unplugging if we can. We're so connected to our phones that if, you know, a text message comes through or an email, we're always checking that. So having opportunities to kind of put our phone away. Uh, getting adequate sleep. So again, if we can put our phones down and we can go to bed a little bit earlier, that makes a really big difference. Uh, another one is taking our breaks. That's important. And not like eating at our desks, getting outside, meeting up with somebody, that sort of thing. And another one that we encourage people is to take their vacations, but not all at once. So if we have four weeks of vacation, let's not do it all at once. Have some long weekends, things like that. 
or what we call as Tarzaning trips. While you're on one trip, take the time to plan your next one. You don't necessarily have to have it booked, but where am I going next? Where is that going to be? So we have something to always be looking forward to. I love the Tarzaning trips. Well, yeah. thank you both so much. I feel like we got some good tips. Uh, hopefully this helps for people one in four who, who have burnout. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.